everybody to tonight's Zero to Hero Intro to Data Science and AI panel with our lovely group of panelists right here. They've taken some time out of their busy schedules in order to bring you some of their insight, deep industry insights, and their experiences working uh, as data science in the field of data science and AI. Um, so the, the kind of the way this is going to be structured is the first 45 minutes, we'll be going through some you know, pre-selected questions as well as diving into their experiences and what they've kind of learned uh, throughout their, their time working in the field. And at the end, we'll be preserving around 15 minutes for any audience questions. So during the panel, if anything comes to mind, any questions you want to ask or get answered by our lovely panelists here, make sure to drop into the chat and we will be grabbing those questions and sending them out uh, for the panelists to answer. Without further ado then, why don't we jump in to some quick introductions from everyone. I'm gonna let everyone else introduce themselves and I'm just gonna go around the table on the order I see on my screen. So Jenny, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. Hey guys, my name is Jenny and I recently finished my study at UBC majoring in stats with a thematics concentration uh, in computer science and currently working as a data scientist at RBC's advanced data and analytics team. Thank you, Sonia. Hey everyone, I'm Sonia. Um, I don't stone me. I did my BCom at Queens, and then I did my master's in management analytics, also at Queens. Um, and now I'm a data scientist at Nextdoor. Awesome. We we love every university here. We accept all universities. Alex. Hey, cool. So uh, I'm Alex. I did high school in Toronto. I went to Caltech uh, for undergrad in computer science, minor in data science. Uh, currently, I am working as a research scientist at Wabi, which is a self-driving truck company, and also doing a master's with the, the CEO of Wabi. That's super, super cool. All right, Will, you're up. Hey, uh, I'm Will. I'm from Shopify's Dev Degree program, so part of the Carlton 2019 Dev Degree cohort. And I'm currently working as a data, data scientist at Shopify, where I'm on the Shopify capital team. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, Amish. Hi, everyone. My name is Amish. Uh, I'm currently working as a data scientist with Spot Hero. Uh, it's a parking company. We are a digital parking market marketplace and sell parking across North America. Uh, I graduated from uh, Western in 2019 from the MSc in Business Analytics program. I represent. <laughs> All right. So I guess with that in mind, why don't we jump into our first question of the night? And this is an open-ended. Again, anyone can jump in and, and answer if they want to. Um, so first question for you is, you know, how did you decide you know, what you wanted to do, what you do? If anyone wants to take that, any thoughts from that experience? Sonia, I, I see you're the first one. Yes, go yeah. for it. Um, I like to tell people that I fell ass backwards into more and more technical roles. Um, so I did not decide, <laughs> really. Um, I kind of just fell into it. I actually started my career in branding and sales and then just like somehow landed in data science. Um, I think school says, sells us this myth that one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, I know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, if I grow up. Um, and I think that's the case for most people, especially like a lot of successful people. Um, if you read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, um, a lot of experts were molded by their surroundings um, and they became the best in the world mostly out of circumstance um, because a lot of times they had no other choice or that's just what kind of their path led. So I recommend for everybody to be flexible, um, follow your interests and, but like also stick with things for a while, like get some grit. Um, I think people these days just kind of like are a little too flaky and they don't stick with things long enough. So like once you pick something, like stick with it, try it out. Um, but then of course be open to new possibilities because you never know what it's where it's going to take you and currently like I'm loving my career in data science and I'm happy I landed here but when I was doing my undergrad in at Queens I graduated in 2015 um data science was not a term that existed that didn't really exist uh analytics was sort sort of being picked up by a few people here and there um but yeah this this was not a career path and especially with my background I had to do a lot of self-study um so yeah just uh kind of by circumstance and I was open to new possibilities and um, I picked something and I stuck with it. Love that story. Love that story. That's awesome. Anyone else want to jump in and, and share their experiences with that? 
I can go next. Uh, I believe I had a pretty similar story as Sonia there. Like uh, data science, like never, I never really knew even what that was. I just got out of school, like went into like a data analytics role. And post that, like, I thought I wanted to move away from the technical, did my master's, like did all my internships and coursework were mostly in business. I was a management consultant at Deloitte. Um, but I think I sort of like in some projects, I just fell in love with it and yeah, just did courses on the side and possibly got my first role as like a entry-level data scientist. Uh, like a, it was a rotation program with HSBC. So yeah, that's how I think I got my first role as a data scientist. And yeah, been loving it for the past two and a half years now. Love that, love that. Alex, Jenny, Will, anyone else want to uh, follow that up? Yeah, I can um, quickly follow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now, why don't you go for it? Oh, really? Sure. Yeah, it's hard to go after uh, Sonia and Elmish had some great responses, <laughs> but I, I would sort of go the more traditional route. Um, in high school, I did a lot of competitive math and competitive programming. Um, I did a bit of machine learning during my research internships after high school. And then once I transitioned to the dev degree program, so we are doing different placements across Shopify, across um, multiple teams, yeah, and athletes. Um, I sort of fell in love with data science after um, switching to the, the most recent placement um, with the capital team. So um, I guess a little bit different, but I, I went through engineering first, then I went to data engineering, and then finally to data science. So I guess a mix of roles, but eventually I found that data science was definitely the career path I wanted to go down. Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, going to university, I actually wanted to do chemistry. I went to a hackathon like you guys are, and that totally changed my mind. I uh, just saw like how quickly people could build on top of each other's work uh, and accelerate like the progress of you know the field. Um, and the fact that everything's so open and easy to, to build off of really was like super cool to me. So then going forward, you know, I was thinking about CS, I really like kind of the ideas and problem solving you do in like machine learning and data science, um, how you take like intuitions about how the world works and, and use like, and turn it into code uh, and, and see like, you know, the measurable progress. Um, in particular, I ended up liking like the self-driving space because I thought it's one of those industries that's uh, very challenging, impactful, and also where ML is like very core to the product. Uh, and so um, that's kind of how I ended up um, where I am now. Awesome. Cool. I guess I'm last. And um, so like up until second year, similar to Alex, I was majoring in biochem and stats. So like with the goal, wanting to pursue something in the healthcare industry. And I got the opportunity to work under a professor um, in healthcare policy where I was introduced to machine learning. Um, and I guess from there, I realized how flexible data science is and you're not really restrained by one type of project. So because of that, I, I realized every single project I get is going to be different from each other. I uh, worked on healthcare policies, environmental risk, and now like property appraisal. So like, it's so different. So I guess my reason is kind of shallow, but I just wanted to try different things, you know, and that's why I like this field. Love that. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what, you know, learning is all about. That's what, again, hackathons are all about, right? Try new things. So it's awesome to hear that you had that experience. So I guess I know I heard a lot of, you know, the classroom experience as well as a lot of folks coming from these educational backgrounds or maybe, you know, less traditional ones in a sense. But I guess that transitions us perfectly into our next question here. And, you know, what was the transition from your classroom learning or, you know, your education internships like to, let's say, your day to day full time work life? If anyone wants to take that on. I'll buy you a little bit more time as I ramble, as if I'm anyone. And I see Will, I'll throw it to you. I can take that on. I think I'll, I'll have probably a more different experience than most other people. Um, so it's part of the dev degree program. So devdegree.ca if you want to check it out, but sort of a different experience or a different take on the university program in that you're sort of doing work uh, and school at the same time. Um, so while I was pursuing my degree in computer science at Carleton University, I was sort of doing Shopify work on the side um, and sort of in the, the last placement, so maybe four or five months back, I was already working as an intern, sort of doing similar things to what I'm doing right now as a, as a data scientist. So 
pivoting towards from classroom learning to my day-to-day -day work didn't take too too much i'll definitely say that um the the theoretical work or uh, the theoretical concept that concepts that we learned at school didn't transition too too well uh, into the, the, the work industry there's a lot of different nuanced concepts that you won't encounter in the classroom um so i'll say that yeah the work experience definitely um made the transition a lot easier Yeah, I guess I'll follow up on that. So initially, uh, since I'm relatively new in this field, I started in October, I definitely felt like a huge imposter. Um, everyone around me had like a master's or PhD degree. So I felt really intimidated. But then you realize just because you're not in school, it doesn't mean you'll stop learning. Like you'll come across different algorithms that you aren't familiar with or like haven't seen at all. And you realize other people are, are the same. So I feel like this imposter syndrome or feeling of lack of, it's a way to motivate yourself to learn and like to catch up because you don't want to fall behind. And I think that's totally okay to feel that way. Yeah. I can go next. Um, I also want to just quickly point out that data science is such a big umbrella and it means a lot of things and there are very different types of data scientists so like from what i'm gathering from some, some of the other panelists here is that like like some of you guys like um you do a lot of like ml and building like models and everything but that's just like one facet of data science like there's a ton of like product analytics like especially if you work in consumer tech like i do like for work for a social networking app um there's a ton of product analytics. There's a lot of like experimentation that you need to do experiment design and analysis, which is a whole other thing. Metrics, oh my gosh, the number of times I have to stay up late to um, do a deep dive into metrics is crazy. So there's there's that and like there are so many facets and then like we also build data pipelines um, where I work. So it's a lot of different things. And so you will not learn all of these things in the classroom. Um, and, but I think what, what I've kind of taken away because like when I was in, in fourth year, I was already working full time and I kind of like fit school into like trying to work. And then I did my master's, uh, full time while working full time as well too. Um, so like my transition is like not really comparable. And again, I was in marketing and then I was in yeah, I was still in marketing. Um, so doing something completely different, but um, I did learn quite a bit. I got a good like statistical foundation in grad school. Um, had to learn like how to use the actual tools myself because at the time the program that I took, um, it was mostly done with like Excel uh, and in in a little bit of R, but not, not too much. And now um, most of what I do is like SQL, um, Python, a bit of R too, but um, like we didn't learn how to build pipelines or even how to really write a query, um, which I think is a little concerning. But um, but yeah, so it didn't. So the transition from like what I learned in school to what I do now was like it took a while for me and it was full of detours. Um, but I think uh, what Jenny said really like is is important. You're going to constantly be learning and you're not going to learn everything in school. A lot of your, what you're going to learn is on the job. I learned SQL on the job um, and then like also taking classes on the side. I just finished another brain station course um, to get my Python levels up to my like my R levels and even better. Um, so you're going to constantly have to be learning. And in this, if you choose to work in data science or in tech in general, you're that that comes with the territory. Beautiful answer. We love that. Alex. Um, yeah, I can go next. So <clears throat> I think um, there's a couple of things that I think transferred well in my, like from classrooms and also a couple of things that like didn't. So overall I found like in my day to day, um, doing like, like training like different models, but also right building like the things that will allow you to actually make like good decisions. Um, so um, like getting me good metrics, deciding what to monitor, um, figuring out like how to run efficiently. Uh, so um, what was the point of that? 
Uh, so overall, I found that uh, my reading and like communication skills that I practice at school was like pretty useful. Um, but was most is probably like doing independent or like hackathon projects and, and um, more like applied courses. So like actually one of the best courses for teaching like data science was um, like a bio uh, like ML course. At, and because the professor there is not like as interested in teaching you the theory as opposed to like making sure you have the skills to like do it. And I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so overall, like um, past that, I think some of the other skills though that uh, school doesn't really prepare you for is kind of what I, I guess for us, um, and I think for a lot of data science, there's still so many like unanswered questions about how to do your work the right way. Um, and so it's important to like have kind of research skills uh, to allow yourself to dig deeper, like find like bugs. So like, what do like current approaches get wrong? And also know when to, what to prioritize, like that that's high impact to solve. Uh, and I, so I think, yeah, uh, co go, coming from school, I think definitely I had to take a lot more like ownership and independence uh, uh, to like think about what is like missing, uh, which is um, I don't know, it's, uh, like something you, you guess you learn eventually. Amazing. Amazing, very deep insight. And then finally, last but curse, of, of course not least, Amish. Well, I, I sort of resonate with like Alex on that. Um, I, I studied like physics in my undergrad and then I did a business course. So I had like no data science whatsoever. Like everything I learned, and I think it's the case for almost everyone on the pattern, they learned on the job. And and just um, and also like I haven't personally like and that is the case for data science industry to these days because I haven't seen like anyone like do a bachelor's in data science and like go into the industry that just does not exist. So like in a sense like if you do like a technical degree and like if you have like some math knowledge, some reading, some communication, I think those skills sort of will take you a long way in, in your data science journey than actually in a data science course, because like everything is changing so fast. Like it's like, if I just don't open my laptop for like a month and I open up, like industry has just gone to a different level. Like I haven't even heard about AutoML and there's all, already AutoML 2.0 coming. So like, what is that about? <laughs> so yeah, um, so not a great transition, but I think um, it's just part of the rule, I think. Yeah, I mean, definitely from what I'm hearing, a lot of it is that more practical aspect, right? And learning on the job, learning in your projects. And I guess, again, perfect for everyone here attending a hackathon, definitely put that put that to work and really experience uh, that aspect of that. So that's amazing insights into that transition. Um, so I guess moving on to our next question here. Um, so kind of more of a general question then, more about kind of the role, your roles itself. And of course, again, uh, you know, of course, everyone has very different roles, maybe in a sense, and maybe this could give some more clarity in a sense. Uh, but, you know, how does the data science, you know, function that you work on add value to your company? Like, what are you kind of doing for your company? What are you really working on? How does that really translate into the bigger picture and the goals that you're working towards? bigger picture question you know I'll ramble on a little bit more let someone there we go Amish okay I can go <laughs> um so just to summarize like how does data science basically add value or something like how does it function at my company yes right like cool um so I have been part of like a few different companies and I think it just means a lot of different things um so I will talk about my current company like it's more of a product-based firm and thankfully it has like great knowledge about what data science is essentially. I'm not just making proof of concepts and Jupyter notebooks after Jupyter notebooks, which I have done in the past and like they just have no meaning, it's just lying somewhere. So the way it functions for, for us right now is uh, we have uh, a dedicated group of life analysts, um, uh, data scientists and machine learning engineers and a software engineer, like one or two. And obviously there's a product manager who is sort of bringing together everything. So we have each half are like parts divided. So right now we are uh, building a dynamic pricing algorithm for the parking industry. And so the data science is sort of 
uh, involved in like experimentation of it. Okay, if we like deploy the model, does it even work or not? And also building out like what the model would be. And then there's like the analyst whose main job is like building out the dashboards, deciding the metrics so that we can present something to the operators. And then there's the engineers who are actually like taking whatever we are like putting, pushing out of them and them actually giving to the customers. And, and then there's a project uh, product manager who is sort of overseeing everything and seeing like whether it's a product market fit and that sort of stuff. But yeah, just to, in hindsight, like that's the way I've started working very recently. But before that, um, yeah, it was quite different. Like it means a lot of different things in a lot of different industries. Yeah, I guess to echo what uh, Amish was saying, I feel like there's often a lot of partnership between the business um, stakeholders and the data scientists uh, because it's like a project and um, usually they bring the idea like what they need or what is lacking in the current industry um, to us. So I guess the current team that I'm working uh, with is it developing an internal product that already exists outside. Um, so primarily it would reduce costs, but also since our stakeholders has been using these tools over the years, they know, like I said, what is lacking and what they want, uh, like feature improvements. Uh, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, this means that like our team can work really closely with these users to develop a product that's more suitable for their needs. And I think um, that's the case with all the different data scientist teams um, in the company that I'm working. I can go next. Um, so kind of more philosophically, um, like, again, depending on what, what kind of data scientist you are, um, because of my background um, and sort of addressing the previous question as well, um, like my communication skills are really strong um, where like I don't have the technical background. Um, so that kind of offsets it, but where that really makes me shine as a data scientist is being the bridge between the technical and the non-technical. So I am like my PM's right-hand person. Uh, we are, we're a product-led company and very data-driven. Um, so nobody makes decisions without data. Um, so I am my product manager's right-hand person when it comes to um, uh, deciding where to take the product basically and like tr trying to figure out opportunities. Um, it's a very strategic role um, and really the goal is to improve the user experience so that they come on more. Um, that helps our revenue as well um, and it just the more content is produced and the more people connect uh, the more valuable the product is to them. Um, so sort of in a nutshell, that's where I'm at now. I'm about to transition in a role that um, is actually going to um, sort of help work, like is work with marketing and um, and international teams to launch new markets. So that that will be less product focus, like less so like improving the product experience, but mostly um, kind of more of a strategic uh, role in advising like where the opportunities are, developing metrics. I've been working on developing metrics for some of these things um, to actually be able to measure uh, the different stages of maturity of these new markets and stuff like that. So um, yeah, a, a lot of different ways. It's really interesting to hear. Definitely a lot of you know cool things you can really do in this field. And again, wide range of like, things you can really do and things you can make impact on. Uh, Alex, I see you've unmuted. Yeah, uh, I can go next. Uh, so I think um, my role maybe is a bit more like unusual from this panel, whereas uh, I would say um, I am more on like the ML like engineering slash research hybrid uh, side. And so um, that means that kind of it's more product focused uh, and it's like, like making a, like a product um, and then also measuring how well it does and then thinking about like all that stuff. And as well, the product is, you know, a truck that can drive itself. But a part of that is making sure that it can predict where other people are going and, and plan like safe trajectories. And so um, basically working on making it like 
uh, like solving these kind of prediction problems, right, uh, with machine learning. Um, but I think there's also a lot of other roles that kind of come with doing something like this. Like you don't just are not just like working in isolation trying to make some you know, gigantic like complicated model. Uh, you want to like make something that is like scalable, is efficient. You know that can be more label efficient. So use less data. And in addition, uh, I think you build on top of all the work that the other teams do. And so like like mapping and you know, um, computer vision. And so uh, it's also important to figure out like, what do you like, yeah, how, how can uh, you take what you learn from your results and use that to improve like their products as well? Um, because ultimately, like, they're, they're making something that is like being consumed by you, which, um, and, and so you're getting insights that they don't see. Uh, which I think maybe is more related to what the traditional data science uh, idea is. Although there's very, saying something like a traditional data, data science is, there's nothing really that like that. For sure, for sure. And Will? Yeah, so I guess backtracking a little bit. So sort of what Shopify does is we uh, offer like an e-commerce platform for merchants all across the world. And the product that I work on, so Shopify Capital, is that we offer cash advances and loans to eligible businesses, um, I guess, based on their previous sales and store performance. So we don't need, we don't th go through like the bureaucracy of a bank and it's a lot easier and faster to apply for a loan. So I'd say how our team adds value to the company would definitely be um, through just helping the, all of our stakeholders. So like helping the eng team either find bugs, like if there's a race condition in the data or if they charged a, a negative financing or set up tables on the data lake for the finance and legal teams, make sure like the APR. So a lot of these finance terms were not going over and being a loan shark, um, doing AB experimentation. I think Sonia mentioned um, optimizing merchant performance or product performance um, by testing out different features. So offering a loan at like 5% and then seeing if we increased it for, uh, if we increase the financing size by 10%, how many, how much more adoption do we have? And I guess finally, um, mainly we're all, all, all of this is working towards the merchant. So for evening the ground for uh, small and medium sized businesses and making sure that they have uh, fair and accessible um, access to capital when they need it. Love that. So yeah, I think we've got a great kind of scope of you know, all these different things we can do within this broad umbrella of data science. But I guess now drilling down a little bit more specifically into maybe the more everyday projects that you're working on you know, today. Um, you know, what is the typical workflow like for you on the projects you're working on currently? You know, who are the other kind of team players in the team? Like, you know, data engineers, analysts, business analysts in a sense. And how, and I guess a follow-up to that as, as well is, you know, how does that workflow help you translate that data into actual insights? So again, drilling down into the actual projects themselves that you're working on, who are you working with and how does that help you really, again, translate that data or translate that into the end product or end results at the end of the day? If anyone wants to jump in for that, anything you think of from your work, maybe even previous projects as well, uh, previous workplaces, uh, all great things to give some insight into the everyday. Okay, I guess I can start. Um, awesome. Yeah, so I think it usually begins with like everyone sitting together with the stakeholders and first identifying what is like the key statement, what is the key problem that we're trying to solve. And then um, everyone assists with like user researches and like competitor market research, etc. And then um, after brainstorming solutions together, um, in my ex experience, the data scientist usually looks at the data and determine what type of modeling or solution um, is most appropriate and kind of um, bridges together the BA and the data engineers. And then um, like the data scientists would work closely together with the BAs and PMs to communicate these decision makings and business logic to the stakeholders. And once that decision is made, um, the, uh, the data scientists can work collaboratively with data engineers or developers in scaling up the project. So yeah, that's my experience. Much, I think you had something to say as well. Oh, sure, I can <laughs> go. Um, 
I think I answered this in my previous question as well. Um, so yeah, uh, at Sport Hero, um, I like after like we have because a lot of the projects that like I generally do like or have done um, are like proof of concepts, which is how all the projects start. Like it's like oh, can, is there a product market fit or something? Can, like does it even add value to your business? And post that after uh, the very arduous and long journey, like and you have proof that okay, it actually works. Um, then the way it's sort of uh, structured at our company is like we build pods. So a pod can have, depending on the sort of the project, it, it generally consists of like a product manager. Um, if it's a data science product project, like data scientists would obviously be there. And then, and data science in as a like as a rule, like is not very like full stack. So there's definitely need of like software engineers, some backend developers to actually like build all those like APIs endpoints to actually put it out there or machine learning engineers. And then um, almost of, always like a product manager is like very strongly coupled with a like a business analyst for data analyst to actually like um, build out some dashboards or or like metrics and all that stuff. So yeah, that's how it works at Spot Hero. Sorry, you can right. go ahead, Sonia. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, I think for, um, for at least for what I've seen, it really depends on the type of project. So um, I normally work embedded on a product team. So when it comes to experiments and whether that's like just building out a new feature or changing a feature or just like, or we completely redesigned one of the products I was working on earlier this year, um, that um, that started, I think Jenny said, like you, you talk to your stakeholders and you figure out um, sort of what, what the end goal is. And then a lot of it is working with um, like designers too. And um, like they'll, they'll design whatever you're, is trying to be built. Um, and at the same time, like um, my my role has been to figure out like okay how are we going to measure this um, based on the things that are changing what is likely to be impacted but then also what are some other guardrail metrics that we need to pay attention to because we can't like we can't break those um, so then it's especially if you're you're building a new product you have to have like good tracking because you know garbage in garbage out if you have garbage data coming in or incomplete data then you won't be able to do anything with it. Um, so, so I'll work with the engineers then to um, build the most robust yet as simple as possible kind of tracking, event tracking for what what events are going to fire, stuff like that. Um, and then when it comes to actually analyzing the experiment, um, I'll have like notebooks that run like run queries and just figure out like what the differences between the, the treatment groups and the control are, um, whether that's statistically significant or not, um, and then make a decision based on that. But then when it comes to like other kind of analysis type of projects, oftentimes that will start with a question or a business need. And then um, that one is a little bit like it doesn't involve quite as many people that one is a little bit more individual where um, I'll go I'll do my analysis I'll like provide recommendations but there will always be a group of stakeholders that I keep in the loop and that will give me feedback and it's a very much a two-way street and they ask awesome questions that I didn't think of and then I'll point out other things that they didn't think of and um, it's very much like a conversation you're constantly like developing this thing um, and then once once it kind of gets to a point where like either you want to implement it or let's say I'm building out a new framework of looking at the business or like new metrics, then a lot of times we'll have, I'll have to build data pipelines um, so that we can actually ingest that data on a daily or hourly or whatever regular basis so that I don't have to run these massive queries um, on data every single day manually. So like I build the pipeline um, which after I've done the analysis shouldn't be too difficult. And then once that's built, then I'll go on to port it into something like Looker where I'll build out dashboarding and then maybe do continue doing analysis now that I have a lot of data and I've been able to backfill it for many months. Um, so those are sort of two different uh, workflows. One is a little bit more collaborative and independent or in, in 
embedded in a product team, and the other one is a little bit more independent. Amazing insights. Thank you. And Will? Yeah, I was just going to add on like to the analogy that Sonia made, uh, that sort of communicating with stakeholders or like that process is like a conversation. There's that constant back and forth of like, oh, like you need this. And then like, what exactly do you need? And then clarifying on the questions on the, speci on the specificities of the metrics you want to withdraw. And then finally, afterwards, um, converting raw data into, into model data, it's impossible to join all these complex uh, tables together and make a really long messy query. So yeah, it's there's just so many teams at Shopify though. So saying a typical workflow of a data science project is pretty much impossible. We have like product classification teams. Um, our team does has several financing models ourselves. So they're very different, but the key concept is, I think uh, a lot of, everyone mentioned it uh, so far, but stakeholder communication, like aligning with stakeholders, whether it be Eng or product managers or uh, someone from finance or legal or marketing, um, button, button clicking tracking is super important as well. Um, and then transitioning their problems into um, something that you can derive actionable insights from. Amazing. Alex, any final thoughts to close out this question? Uh, yeah. Um, so I think um, a lot of the people that I have to work with um, are like similar to what um, others have said, but I think another one is like DevOps. Like um, it's, I guess at a smaller company, it's really intensive to run these models. And so work a lot with them to try to figure out um, yeah, how, how we can scale our models. And it also like front end engineers, um, because like knowing how the performance of a self-driving algorithm doing is doing is, is very tricky. And you, you really have to look at it and understand how the model's making decisions. And so a large part of what we're doing is also like being able to introspect um, and, and build tools to allow us to like analyze the inside of, you know, of these brains basically. Um, and then uh, I think the typical workflow uh, for us, I think it's, you know, get the data, train the model, measure its progress and understand like what are the next steps. Um, this is even like relevant for us building a product. Um, uh, and like, for example, I can relate to what people said about like, you know, like the typical, you know, it's, it's like science, like you have a control study, you like change something, you have to measure how it works. Um, at least for us, you know, there's like an infinite number of things you could tune. So how do you pick which ones you think are gonna be like the right, the most important ones to like do an experiment with? And you know, how do you make sure those experiments are actually comparable? Like recently I had a model that um, it, the way it works, it actually changed the data that it, it was working on, like the data distribution that um, it operated on. And so that made the experiment like, like not controlled anymore, just due to the way the model um, uh, was structured. And so, uh, like you kind of have to think about those things as well. Amazing. I think definitely one big takeaway we've all heard is I think communication seems like to be one of the big kind of things that it just is really common across this role, being able to communicate across all these stakeholders, as well as really analyzing and looking deep into what you're working on. So again, great takeaway for everyone who's listening right now. And I guess one final, maybe more bigger picture question before we go into the, the Q&A. Uh, and again, for the folks that are listening right now, if you have any questions on the top of your mind, make sure to drop them into the chat and our panelists will be more than happy to respond to those. But kind of in this sense, and the question I have for you now is, you know, how do you see the role of a data science evolve kind of over time? I know there's a lot of different tools that are coming out to really help automate a lot of these processes. Uh, however, of course, you know, how do you really see your role evolving to really you know, keep in step with these technologies? How are you using these new technologies to improve the role? What do you kind of see again as the landscape or maybe the future of how your role will evolve down the line? Maybe a bigger existential question maybe to, to ask right now. Bit uh, a lot for uh, you know, 8 p.m. on a you know, Thursday, Wednesday night, but anything in your thoughts, you know, how your role will evolve, how things will change down the line with you know, new tools that are coming out every day. Um, that you know sometimes could even replace some of the more mundane tasks and, and how do you kind of see that again helping you maybe evolve your own skills helping you make your job easier and I see Sonia you've unmuted so I'll throw it over to you yeah I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this so I'm hoping that everyone else can be a little more insightful than I can um, but I think that the table stakes 
will just continue to increase. So um, it's like the different parts of data science will be less kind of scattered between many people and everyone will be expected to be able to do a lot more things, kind of more end to end, build your own pipelines. Don't expect a data engine to do it. Um, they're busy doing like more complicated things. So like, you, you have to do that yourself um, all the way to, um, yeah, it's just table stakes to, to have really strong technical skills, but also um, we'll be increasingly expected to be good communicators. Um, your analysis or model or whatever your your work is is only as good as your ability to communicate it so um doesn't necessarily matter like what kind of tools you use to get to there but even if you build the most robust beautiful piece of statistical work um if you can't get your stakeholders to buy in and to use it and to really understand your, the impact of it, or even if it's like a really in-depth analysis, um, it's it's wasted work. Um, and so that's why I'm saying table stakes, both on the technical and kind of the softer skills and are both increasing. They're both equally important. You need both. Um, and with more and more packages coming out, um, like any kind of, Joe Schmo can take a Coursera course and like call themselves a data scientist. Um, but you really need to be like more increasingly well-rounded. Love that insight. Love how we brought a lot of the things we were talking about earlier today into that answer. Anyone else have any thoughts on, on this question? Will, I see you're unmuted. Yeah, sure. So I think one of the books recently, or I guess related on the topic of well-roundedness that our CEO brings up pretty often is range and on the concept of like being a well-rounded individual and generalism is always super important. Um, but I'd agree with Sonia totally that communication will always be probably the highest table stake for all data scientists, knowing how to communicate your insights uh, in an actual manner. Um, I think in terms of all these new tools like AutoML or um, uh, GPT-3 in terms of how like they or how they're viewed as like a, a threat to the to the role of data scientists. I, I feel like we're sort of a long way until um, these models even get close to replacing um, sort of what what the day-to-day -day data science um, data scientist does. They're super sensitive. You need to do so much feature selection and tuning. Um, for example, just Anecdotally, um, if, if anyone has heard of the Zillow um, case study where they um, almost put all their, all their dollars into the Zillow offers, um, some probably machine learning model, and they were flipping homes and they lost all their money um, due to sort of an un unforeseen regime shift. So I think sort of like how GitHub Copilot will, um, like programmers will eventually have to pair with that and learn how to work with it together. I think data scientists in turn will have to uh, learn to adapt to all these new technologies. Um, I don't know, the new version of Spark, the new version of Hadoop, um, building out an another data pipeline. Um, and again, yeah, it, it only can get more complicated. So. I'd just like to butt in and add to that, um, building off of like what, what you're saying, William. Um, yeah, like 80, like, okay, this is not sexy, but 80% of our job is mostly like data cleaning and just like checking the sanity and making sure that there are no dupes or that it's the data is what you think it is. Um, and so with a lot of these these uh, tools like AutoML, I've never used it, but I imagine that you, you still need extremely clean data to go in there. Um, so you're still doing like 80 to 90 percent of what the job is anyway. So I don't think they're going to replace us anytime soon. Yeah, and I just wanted to build off both your points that I think any sort of automation um, are intended to make people's jobs easier, but in my opinion, it will only act as um, assistance, like it would act as a second opinion. Um, I think there's a lot that usually goes into model selection, model training, um, a lot of like features, we, we choose that this makes biz uh, this makes sense in a business sense, right? That's why we include it or like, this um, is not included due to ethical reasons and automations doesn't really um, allow for the flexibility. So I think automation isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, I don't see it as a threat either, more like a bolster to our decision-making. 
And I think data science as an industry, like any other industry is always evolving anyway. So like, you just have to keep yourself um, up to date like anyone else in any profession. Yeah. Alex? Yeah, so maybe I'll answer this more from a ML engineering perspective. Uh, so I think um, one thing that's changed between five years ago and now is before, you know, maybe you need a couple of computer vision engineers to build like um, some computational neural network. But now you can get one guy to download the state of the art, you know, GitHub repository and just run it. And most of the work, at least on the model architecture side is done. Uh, and so I definitely think that as these technologies get more mature, um, the actual modeling side can will get simpler uh, for for certain fields. Uh, you know, and, and now like like oh, you know, GPT three like now you don't even need an ML engineer, right? Uh, but well, you, you you need less. But um, I think that uh, actually with that comes uh, opening of new fields that um, present like more opportunities for like a use in ML. So like uh, chemistry, uh, neuroscience, robotics, just to name a few are still like pretty early stage and they don't really have it figured out. There isn't just like a do it all model um, that, that will work. Um, and so I think, yeah, I'm not like very worried. Uh, I, I think there's still like so much work to do. Uh, and then a little bit on the research side, um, from just my observation, there seems to be nowadays, you know, more research output than there is consumption. Uh, and so a lot of people are doing research, but the actual research that makes it to like people's hands uh, is, is not as much. And I think um, part of that, uh, like what I observed, the, the research that does the best is things that are generalizable tools and insights that um, people can like plug into an existing uh, like workflow. Um, and I think a lot of interesting research areas are, are driven by like new data sets um, that initially people are not sure how to solve with like traditional methods. Uh, and, so, uh, and so I think uh, in both those areas, I think, yeah, it's like, you know, just doing ML research right now, it's, it's, it's every year it's getting more competitive to uh, like submit to these conferences. And even if you do, there's no guarantee like anyone will see it. So um, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a good insight on that, but uh, I think people need to think about more strongly what they're researching. Interesting, interesting look on the other side, on, on the research side. And Amish, any final thoughts? Fantastic point by Alex. I never thought it like that. Like the research that is happening is just too much and it's not being consumed because I always thought that, oh my God, like I'm just missing out on everything. Uh, but on a lighter note, like whenever someone like says that AI will like rule humanity or like something, like this like funny meme that comes to my mind, you know, like where the data scientist is trying to figure out cat from a dog and someone says, that, oh, yeah, I will like rule humanity. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't think... Uh, yeah, like auto ML or like whatever tools are out of place to actually like replace the role altogether. Where I see like it will definitely go hand in hand, like a lot of the mundane tasks, the boring tasks of like actually setting the hyperparameters, uh, which personally I don't find very uh, invigorating or exciting, that might go away. Um, but like the meat of the part is still like presenting your analysis, like actually doing something that's, uh, that's fit in the market that actually adds value. Um, yeah, that, that, and that is like the core of the job that will stay there. And, and like, the, yeah, the ML part, like the building pipelines, deploying, like just as an example, like when I started out, like we used to write these like big ass SQL statements and someone used to like, in, back in the 16, someone used to run them daily at night to actually like take the data from some place and put it there. And then like airflow came along. So that solved everything. And now there's five plan. You don't even need to do anything. It's just like, it does it on its own. So yeah, like the tasks become easier, but uh, the role is still there. <laughs> so. 
Amazing. I mean, yeah, amazing insights from everyone. I think that was like, it's a great exploration to that. And of course, yeah, it's always about learning. It's always about letting the technology augment your work at the end of the day. And of course, it's never actually going to replace in the sense. So no, that's great. And of course, Alex is an amazing point on the ML side, on the research side. Really interesting that if you think about that. So um, that's awesome. So I guess we're kind of towards reaching the end here. Um, and you know, if anyone in the audience has any questions, you know, they'd love, you don't know, want to ask to our panelists here, feel free to raise your hand on Zoom or drop into the chat. Uh, we can send off the question uh, to them to answer. I haven't seen anything just yet. So if anyone has anything in the mind, you know, feel free to drop it. Again, it can be anything we've talked about here today or any other questions maybe, you know, from your perspective. Um, if not, we can jump into one more question that we have here prepared uh, to give you time to, you know, think of a question if anyone in the audience wants to. Um, so for the panelists, you know, what piece of advice then would you give for students, you know, looking to break into this field of data science? Is there anything you wish you knew when you were starting out um, of something that could have helped you maybe accelerate things or something you wish you did differently once you first starting out? Any, anything that comes to mind from your perspectives? I have a couple. Yeah. yeah, um just off the top of my head, and these are mostly things that we already touched on. One, um, your analysis or model is only as good as your ability to communicate it. So get like do some introspection, get really, really real with yourself and practice on other people and see if they are actually understanding the insights that you're trying to say. Um, even when I was TAing for the master's program that I did, um I would sit in presentations and they would be like, ah, numbers, numbers, numbers. And I'd, at the end of it, I'd be like, and so what? Like, what do I do about this? Um, and it's really easy and I've been there and it's really easy to um, lose sight of the forest from the trees um, because you're so deep in the weeds a lot of times, but practice your communication skills, um, hire a coach, a communication coach, take classes, um, and then if that's not, if that is your strong suit, then get better technical skills. And um, I would say that no matter how much, how many courses you take, um, it's like they'll never teach you what actual experience does. So if you are still eligible to do internships, I highly recommend you grab whatever internship you possibly can. Um, and then if that's not available to you, any kind of end-to-end -end project where you start with like, let's say a data set and you have to clean it and work with it. And then at the end, uh, produce a model and kind of define like what are also the limitations of your model and like that whole end-to-end -end project. You can do that through like Kaggle and like all these other um, sites that have data sets or hackathons. These are, this is a great place to practice. And honestly, practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you're going to get better, not through reading books, not through watching YouTube videos. Just need to do it. Love that point. Will? I uh, just have a short, almost a contrarian point in uh, when comparing or saying that Kaggle is sort of a good resource in terms of breaking into data science. I feel like most of the data you'll get um, is always unclean. So I feel like starting off with Kaggle gives you a false impression of what the data science world might look like. So I think- Yeah, for to, sure. Yeah. So I, to, I just I, mean like like those the sites where you can get, um, like if you can't get an internship, like just get your hands on some data and, and do something. Right, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think creating projects to solve prob like real world problems that I guess that are actually problems in the real world that are unsolved with maybe even starting with collecting the data yourself um, would be almost a, a totally novel way to approach this. But, and then afterwards, I guess, just the preparing for interviews and getting internships and repeating that entire cycle over and over again. Love that. Excellent insight to that. Amish, Jenny, Alex, any thoughts from your perspective? Um, yeah, I will add something like obviously like great points raised by Sonia and uh, William, just to sort of be a, add a different front to it. Um, I think data science actually means a, a lot of different things. Like you can be a data scientist and like not use Python, like be an Excel. Like you can be a data scientist and not run ML models all day long. So you can be like experimentation, like metrics, dashboard, register. 
whole different side to it so yeah i think like when um people think about data science it's like oh you build like ml models all day long when uh yeah i also don't model <laughs> we don't tell people that sonia we are put, oh, it, pushing it took, like... it took this whole hour for us to finally <laughs> no, no, no. fill the beans <laughs> No, no, no. I'm pushing like computer vision models like all day long. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, so if you're actually like interested, like I think like if you like data, if you like bringing out analyses, if you just building dashboards like that, that's a very crucial part. Like you cannot do anything without it. So yeah, it does mean a lot of different things and just having an understanding of like what you uh, like, what you like. And what industry you want to go in like because like i'm sure data science does not motivate you it would be like data science in retail or data science in like some industry or something it would have another angle to it so i yeah, do explore that and the reason i sort of said is like because whenever someone wants to break into data science they're like oh let me finish this like andrew ng course like end to end cnn dn like deep models so just yeah like those are definitely very good and there is definitely a place for those sort of rules but yeah there's a whole area for you to explore and do explore that that's amazing and i guess with that in mind uh since we are you know at the last minute or so i see that oh everyone's responding to amar okay perfect so um yeah hopefully amar that answers your question i see a couple of answers there unless anyone else has any you know things they wanted to say out loud or to kind of respond oh perfect we got some links as well oh we love that yes Ali, do you want to quickly unmute? Yes. Hey guys, uh, it's it's been a great session overall. I'm I'm a data scientist. I'm I'm a data science student at Western. Um, so I had this question. Um, what's the importance of statistics in data science? Because thing is, what since I'm a data science student here, um, half my courses are comp sci and half my courses are, are statistics. But I, I really wanted to like get a get an insight of how much statistics is being used in terms of you know coding and stuff. So what, 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 what do you guys say? Um, from an experimentation point of view, statistic is very uh, important. Um, not only when you're, you're analyzing and like getting to stats egg, um, knowing, knowing which kind of analyses to run on your experiments is really important, um, but also in um, your experiment design. So before you design an experiment, doing a power analysis is really important because then that'll tell you how how much data do you need even to get to statsig um so stuff like that um so i i use stats often um especially when it comes to experimentation yeah i totally agree i think um stats for um data science is what really sets you apart because anyone or like it depends on your role as a data scientist right but then for to be able to model um something in data science, anyone can do it. Like someone mentioned earlier, like you just download a package and apply it, but you you aren't able to justify why you're using this these things. You need to understand how this algorithm is applied and why this is better than another one. So in my opinion, um, having solid stats background is um, puts you at an advantage. Um, yeah. Okay, awesome. thank you. Thank you very much.